Hey guys, a uh, quick disclaimer for those of you that already saw the video. Uh, I, there was a, an issue, or not an issue, a mistake. I forgot to turn off the recording while I received a phone call while I was recording. So about 250 persons uh, were able to see a little bit of my day-to-day -day interaction with my, my baby and my wife. I apologize. Well, not really apologize. I'm a little bit more embarrassed than... Uh, I'm sorry because uh, <laughs> you got to see some some crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, that's I guess part of life. So thank you if you saw it and you wrote the comments. Otherwise, I think I wouldn't know this. And um, yeah, uh, this is just the updated one. So those of you uh, that didn't see it, well, it's just a little bit of my life that you um, that I, I just want to keep private. So yeah, that's it. Enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Um, I'm not gonna go. We're not that serious. <laughs> See, I'm not even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, so yeah, first of all, thank you guys. Thank you everyone for all of the get well wishes. I've been uh, moving my stuff around here. I'm still in lockdown. I'm gonna have to remain here like for the next like, five days while I'm still contagious. I'm feeling okay, just a little bit tired, but okay. Thankfully, uh, I was vaccinated and uh, things are just like running at scores. So yeah, uh, I was actually recording uh, the this video and it, it just like I, I couldn't make it to work. So I'm starting again to make sure that we get the, the best things uh, for you guys. So um, I was mentioning in the last video that here in Mexico, we tend to sell these things. I think it's pretty much in a lot of places, not only here, but these are smoke bombs, like little smoke bombs that uh, they sell and that you can just like... Uh, using usually in independence day and then on christmas and new years and the last couple of years they've been banning them uh, like not only this ones but any sort of like a pyro uh, technical things uh but yeah like i wanted to try uh and show you or, or try and do like a smoke bomb simulation so this is going to be a two-part series today we're going to be working on the on the smoke bomb uh but we're going to work on the animation of the smoke bomb and then uh tomorrow we're going to do the smoke itself okay so um I already have the textures ready. I already have the model ready. It was on the older video, but I'm going to keep this short and that way we can focus on, on bullet, which is a simulation thing. Now, for those of you wondering, well, we're not supposed, weren't we supposed to have the portfolio review? Yes, but unfortunately, we, there were not enough submissions. We have one really uh, brave student that submitted and uh, it was partially my fault because I forgot to add the link on the descriptions and, um, and I think that uh, some people forgot that the submissions were open. So don't worry, we're just going to save all of the submissions that uh, go through these years, actually, or these years, through these days the submission link is still open so if you want to go back into the videos from this week and submit your file submit it because we're going to have our next review on mid february okay so yeah these are the smoke bombs that again um i used to uh, play with as a kid and uh, i did this little model which is very very simple um just a simple sphere a couple extrudes and then this little like cap here created some uvs and textured them so you're going to see the textures actually let's do the textures real quick uh, I'm just going to say assign a new material and we're going to assign. Actually, do you guys know that there's a substance uh, plugin? I've mentioned this one before, but for those of you that do not know, there is a substance plugin. Really cool. So if you uh, load all of the substance things, you're going to get this substance shelf. And on the substance shelf, there's this really, really cool button, which is um, the uh, to -do -do apply workflow to maps. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to say Arnold because that's the, the map that what I want to create. And then I'm going to go to my uh, source images. And here we have the smoke bomb. I'm going to select these three images that I have, which are the base color, the normal, and the roughness. And due to the way they're named, uh, this little plugin already knows where they're supposed to go. So I just hit apply, and they will immediately create, or this thing will immediately, immediately create. I can't speak normally now. They will immediately clear. Why can I say that? Oh my God. Immediately create a nice little material right here. So this one, I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call it um, uh, where here. There we go. Uh, why is it not letting me change the name? That's weird. Non-deletable node. Huh. Non-deletable. No, I, I don't believe you. There we go. This one. A standard. There we go. So this A standard surface one, I'm going to call it M smoke bomb. There we go. You can see that's this like nice little green concrete sort of shape, a little bit of rust, a little bit of ashware. No, no special thing. Like it's a super, super basic material. So let's assign it right here. 
sign the existing material, smoke bomb, and there we go. That's the, the material that we have. By the way, if you're wondering why colors look so dark now in Maya, that's because of the of the newest like uh, Aces uh, color management system. You can go back to on tone map and it's gonna look a little bit closer, or you can go to raw. Uh, no, sorry, not raw. Uh, I think it's the Unity neutral map, and that looks a little bit closer to what you would see in in a in a normal environment. Now, when you start adding lights, though, like if we were to add like an, an environment light here, like let's see lights, sky dome light. And let's add one of our of our HDRs, like uh, this Orban Corja. There we go. If I hit seven, which is our lights, now it's gonna look nice. It's gonna look like proper. It's gonna look like super correct. So yeah, uh, we can work with this. By the way, see if your computer is strong enough to work with lights uh, turn on, like go for it. It's it's really really cool. Let me save this real quick before it crashes. You know how this thing is. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be using something called Bullet, which you might remember from our MASH video, because MASH use a, uses a Bullet Solver to um, solve the dynamic system, okay? So there's actually a standalone Bullet uh, uh, plugin that comes pre-installed with Maya, as you can see right here, so I'm going to load it. And that uh, you're going to get this little shelf right here now. And this Bullet system will allow us to add dynamics to this thing so that we don't have to hand animate the, the little uh, sphere falling. By the way, the sphere is like two centimeters uh, wide, so it's supposed to be like the proper uh, size, which is great. So I'm going to click this little button, which is create an active rigid body, which is this going to be this guy. And as you can see, it's going to give it a little box, which is the collision box, which is totally wrong because we need a sphere so that it matches a little bit closer to our original uh, object. I do recommend using a sphere instead of using the... Um, uh, the the hull, which is like the actual geometry, because it will be like faster. The, the simulation will be faster. So I am going to go to the bullet solver here, and I'm going to turn on the floor here, ground plane. So now if I hit play, you're going to see that this thing falls, and it should hit the grid right there. Perfect. And it's going to start like rolling a little bit. So it's going to make our lives easier because instead of having to worry about uh, where this thing or like hand animating this thing, like bouncing around, it's going to give us a, a nicer effect. So a couple of things that I want to change due to the scale, the the scale right here is, is really low. So even though it's the proper scale, 9.8 uh, for the gravity, it, it's falling really, really slow. So I'm going to increase this by 10. So 10 times, so it's going to be minus 98 now. And if I hit play, you're going to see that that ball falls in a more, in a much more like believable way, which is this one right here. Now, unfortunately, it's not bouncing and that can be solved on the actual bomb itself. So I'm going to go to the bullet, bullet rigid body and I'm going to increase the restitution, which is the um, ability of the object to go back to its own, uh, like to, to the rest, right? So if I increase the restitution, as you can see, this becomes like a bouncing ball, which is way, way too much. So let's decrease the restitution. Let's go back to the beginning. That's a lot nicer, a lot closer. Uh, these are supposed to be like ceramic things. So I do think a little bit more bounce will be good. Let's check if this works a little bit better. Uh, maybe just a tad bit more. I just want a couple of bounces there because I think that's going to look cool. Cool. That's, that's way, way better. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to give it an initial uh, force or an initial condition. So you can see here that we can add an initial velocity and it's like adding like a, like a little bit of a, of a push to the whole thing. So here in the initial velocity, I'm going to say 10. So it's going to be like a 10, like, like 10 units of force applied to the object in X positive. So it's going to be moving this way. So I'm going to just hit play again. And there we go. And you can see it rolls. It even rolls. Uh, unfortunately, it rolls and rolls and rolls and keeps rolling. <laughs> so that's a little bit, a little bit too much. So I do want to decrease the, the roll of the effect. And the way that we can do this is by increasing a little bit of the linear damping and uh, angular damping. So now when we let this thing go, it will eventually lose a little bit of speed. We can also, and that's important, we'll go to the bullet solver and we need to go here on the ground plane. Let me see if there's like a friction thing because there's usually like a friction. No, there's no friction here. So we're going to have to slow it down with our bullet rigid simulations here. So let's increase the linear damping and the angular damping again. And there you go. So now you can see that it, it falls into the ground and it stops real, real fast. Let's decrease this a little bit. I think we can, we can get away with a little bit more rolling. There we go. That looks really nice. Any dance up like up in, in the air because I, I want the little smoke. This is the what I'm going to try to do uh, for tomorrow's video. I want to try and make sure that the smoke is, 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 is starting from the very beginning, like from the fall of the object and it continues like flowing. So so let's see how, how we can make this thing work. But that looks very cool. It keeps rolling and then it stands still like right there. I'm going to increase this simulation here like a little bit more. Let's say like 160 
to get like more frames out of the of the nice little simulation here. So that looks good. And let's see. Yeah, that's perfect because it stands still. And then after standing still, I still want more simulation. But this is only, or I'm still, we're still gonna have more rendering. But that's the simulation. That's where I want to st uh, stop the simulation. So now that I'm done, one thing that we can do is I can actually um, like grab this geometry, and the, the pivot point is gonna be super, super, super important because where this pivot point goes and the direction that it follows is gonna dictate a lot of the things that's gonna, that are gonna be happening. So I need to bake this uh, animation. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the geometry here. I'm gonna say uh, create, or I'm gonna go uh, edit keys, and I'm gonna bake the simulation. And I wanna bake everything, all the channels that can be like baked, I'm gonna be uh, baking them, and we're gonna bake the time slider. I'm gonna say bake. So what's gonna happen now, as you can see, is that uh, if I go to the bullet solver and turn it off, technically, oh no, we don't have it because we haven't cached yet. Okay, so first we need to cache. So, um, yeah, so let's turn this the simulation first. So now the simulation is simulating, perfect. So I'm gonna grab the smoke bomb and we're gonna go into the cache and let's create like, a, um, yeah, let's do a geometry cache. I mean, we, I think we can do a limbic shape as well. So let's do a limbic. I'm gonna export selection to a limbic. You can see I already had it there. So I'm gonna re repurpose that one and let's do 160 um, elements here. I'm gonna say uh, export selection. Yes, I want to replace it. So now, technically, if I were to turn the bullet solver off and I were to say um, cache, Olympic cache, import Olympic, we should be able to import this sphere right here. And there we go. So you can see that this sphere now, this one, has the proper uh, like Olympic cache. So, so that's the simulation. So the original bomb, uh, we can actually delete it. We don't need it anymore. And uh, we can delete the solver. We don't need it anymore either because we have this simulation right here. And the important thing about this simulation is the pivot point. So let me show you why or what I mean. So I'm gonna create a locator here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select driver, driven, and I'm gonna go into rigging, constraint, and we're gonna go into doo -doo -doo -doo, parent constraint without maintain offset. So the locator is gonna jump, as you can see, to where the sphere is. I'm gonna grab the locator. I'm gonna grab the locator, scale it up, and what I want you guys to see is that as this thing falls and it starts rotating when it hits the ground, the rotator rotates with it. Okay, so that locator or that uh, little thing that we created that's gonna be super important as well because we're gonna be using that one to um, to simulate the smoke uh, or to know where the smoke is gonna be coming from. Okay, so yeah, um, now of course we have the colors. So or we need to assign the material to this guy as well. So there we go. To the smoke bomb. Oh, that's a problem. I think we lost. I think we lost the colors, the UVs. And that is something that I don't want. Yes. Ah, that's unfortunate. Okay, that's weird. Also, let's control C a couple of times and let's go uh, recover our smoke bomb. There we go. Uh, I think we can transfer the UVs. So what we can do is select this one right here, and then select this one right here, and we're gonna go into mesh, transfer attributes. And we're gonna transfer the UV sets and we're gonna say topology, apply. And let's see if it works. It seems like it worked. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, smoke bomb, uh, which is the Olympic cache. It's really slow, I'm not sure why. Let's assign the new material or the existing material, which is the smoke bomb. There we go. So I think the, the main thing that was working like wrong was the bake animation that I tried to do. So I just deleted all of the keyframes and I'm gonna go here to the bullet solver and I deactivated the thing. So as you can see, it's still running like fast. And now I'm gonna try the transfer attributes and technically since they're supposed to be the same type of geometry, I should be able to just grab this guy, this guy going to mesh transfer attributes, and I just want to transfer the UV sets. So that should be the only thing that we're transferring. I'm not transferring anything else. So I'm just going to uh, hit apply. And uh, did that work? I'm not sure. Let's delete history. Does this guy get history? And let's assign the material. There we go. Perfect. So it uh, works and it works faster. Great. 
So now the original uh, bomb can be deleted, the bullet circle can be deleted as well, and we're left with this guy right here. And we're pretty much done with this first part of the video, guys, because we have our nice simulation of the bomb rolling. Now, let's just get our, our uh, render thing uh, going, and uh, that should be it. So I want to do like an infinite background. You know, you guys know I love the the infinite background effects. It's very like traditional to 3D. Um, so let's just do this real quick. And uh, let's push this thing so that there's like, like a flatter surface here. Really, really big so that we don't get any like interventions or problems and um, uh, let's do let's do full HD so so we're gonna have this sort of like element and I just want to have like a still image like this and I want the, the little sphere to to get into frame so so it's probably gonna be about here bloop, bloop. and then or let's do some more. maybe we'll have like a like a camera panning in and out uh, but this is gonna be it. I'm just gonna go for like a quick uh, What's the word? I wish we could do like a We can though there's a new thing well, that's not new but they had a new thing here Which is visualize and we can see the ghost Ghost selected there we go. So we can see how this thing is like Moving and, and animating, but I don't think we can render this can we? Can you render the the information? Like, does it know that there are different objects? That's my question. I don't think it will. But yeah, anyway, this is the, the end of, of part one, guys. Uh, make sure to come back tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to record this again. I, I don't think I've mentioned this in this video, but I'm going to record all of the videos to today so that we can so that I can have a little bit of rest uh, this weekend and, and make sure that um, I got all of my energy for next week. So yeah, this is the first part of it. Um, I'll see if I can get a nice render. If I can get a nice render, I'll show you guys in the next one how I did it. And uh, we'll do the smoke. So it's going to be quite, quite fun. So quick little like animation the simulation here. And now we're going to jump onto the smoke. So hang on tight and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.